He says Prep is a tool that had been used by people who are imaging computers for a long time. It comes with Microsoft. It helps people share their images for segment. What exactly is it used for? Do we still need it today? And what are some problems with SysPrep? We're going to go over that in today's video. Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by CyberVenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting-edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. Okay, so SysPrep's been around a long time, been used in, I think, Windows XP was first created, uh, all the way up through Windows 11 is still using it. This prep in a short version anonymizes your base image that you're trying to clone to other machines. If you don't do this, there is what's called a system ID, SID, that's inherent to the operating system. And when it's deployed to a machine, it thinks it's got a certain identity. And the name of the machine that the machine thinks it is, that the machine really believes it is, is this SID ID, not the computer name value that you could set. Um, when you join it to domain. If you have more than one computer with the same ID on the same network, casting and talking to each other, it can cause conflicts and problems, particularly if you try to join it to Active Directory. So that's why it's important to anonymize or reset this value to a factory default. And the tool, this prep will allow you to give you kind of an out of the box experience, the OBE option, when you deploy this golden image to multiple machines. The process that you do for imaging is to Create the golden image, customize it with all the applications and settings you want, and then right before you capture it, you want to run SysPrep, and that will tear the machine, shut it down when it's done, and then you can boot up and capture that offline image, and then you're getting a clean image that's anonymized, so that when it's deployed to different machines, it acts like it's being turned on for the first time, like when you load a window from scratch, except it'll have all your settings and stuff involved in it. Last video, we talked about using DISM to do the cloning process. SysPep is just the anonymizing process of this, but it's kind of a, I, th I think it deserved its own video. So you strictly speaking, don't need to use SysPrep. You could clone machines and deploy them as long as they don't talk to each other. So if you're selling computer to home users, say you're in a small computer shop in a neighborhood and selling people home computers, we don't really necessarily need it because those machines are never going to see each other. If you're cloning in any kind of business environment, you definitely need SysPrep. There's some problems with SysPrep. I found all kinds of problems under Windows 10 with that those Epic next packages. You got to remove uh, some of those. You have to make sure that they are not in user mode, which is a little funky. We'll talk about that um, briefly. But I want to give first give a kind of an overview of how SysPrep works in a normal operations, and then we'll get into the troubleshooting process. So here is the Windows 11 workstation image that we created in our last video on how to use the DISM utility. We're going to sysprep this box. We didn't last time because I wanted to keep that video a little simpler than it already was. It's a bit uh, long-winded. So this one, we're going to deal with sysprep. I'm going to show you some common problems with sysprep. So we're going to go ahead and run it right off the bat. We'll go to our command prompt. And we want to right-click this puppy and go to run as administrator to get rights. And then we're going to go to our, see it's defaults in our Windows System 32 directory, and then we want the sysprep directory. So far, so good, right? There it is, it's a sysprep exe there, sysprep.exe. And we are going to want to generalize. Yeah, shut down. And out of the box experience. There we go. Now we're going to run this puppy, and it's going to crash, but that's okay. I'll show you why we're doing this in a minute. Can't. Run stuff, review, log, blah, 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 Panther directory. Okay, so let's do that. There's our setup.att file. Thankfully, Windows 11 actually lets you view. <laughs> Windows 10, you didn't need to change a permission first. All right, so our failure is right up here. Package. Package, blah, 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 was installed for a user, but not provisioned for all users. Mind you, I did not install any packages. This is, comes out of the box. So Microsoft literally sets you up to fail out of the box with sysprep. Thanks, Microsoft. Um, if anyone from Microsoft is watching this video, could you stop doing this? <laughs> Problem is, this is not the first package that fails. If you try to run a command, let's go to PowerShell and do that. 
to run a command to remove that particular package. And that would fix it and allow us to do sysprep. If it was the only package, it's not. If we did um, move app x package, actually, no, get app x package. You can see a ton of stuff fly by. Look at that. Look you know what stuff that is. I don't know about you, but I do not have the time to sit there and go through all of this to find every single package. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do all of them at once. So get FX package. Users. We're going to type that to the remove FX package command. And it should take this giant list and spit it right to this program, which removes it. It gets rid of all of them. And it's going to bomb it a bunch, but that's okay. We don't care. As long as the stuff we can remove gets removed. Look at all that stuff. Microsoft packs in there that we don't freaking need. Still go. Still go. Okay, you know, I, I I may pause this video and come back when it's done. It's uh it's cooking. All right, just because the errors are sitting here looking ugly, doesn't mean this is actually anything wrong. Um we're gonna go ahead and attempt to do sysprep again and see what the heck happens. Oh, look at that. It's happy. And cooking. So I'm going to let that cook for a minute. I'm going to pause this. Put Dude's thing off camera. Okay, so it finished. And uh, it shut itself down. So what we should have is a nice sysprepped system. You don't want to boot it right now. That would kind of screw things up. We should have a nice sysprep system. And this is at this point, what you would do is you go to your hardware and you go to your CD-ROM like we did last time. And we'd, we'd go boot off of our uh, our, BART, our PE disk, either Hirons or BART PE or something like that, and then boot. I'm not going to do that here. I'm, I'm just trying to demonstrate sysprep itself. And what you should see is once you clone this image and deploy it. So now we'll, pre we'll pretend we cloned this, and this is what the clone looks like. So all your deploy computers will do this upon booting. Okay, I'll pause for a second while it catches up here. Just uh, started to boot and then rebooted. This initial process does take a while. It's trying to load drivers and all that other stuff. All right, and here we go. This is our out-of-the-box experience. It acts like a new computer. All these questions, by the way, we can also automate using the unattended.xml file, and I'll probably do another video on that, especially if you guys put some comments and they're saying that that's what you need. I'm just kind of skimming through these steps so you, you all can probably figure out what you want to do with this. Just to give a sense of how long this stuff takes, I am pausing ever so often to speed up the video, but this actual process takes a good 10 minutes. Yep, that's true. It's going to do a little bit of rebooting. Just a moment. Yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> There's our reboot. You're 100% there. Stuff. Mm 
Yeah, we're gonna name it Floyd PC one. Reboot. All right. Worker school. Yeah, just like a brand new computer. Uh, and here's our, our lack, complete lack of domain option. But if you uh, hit your options there, here, come back. If I sign in options, there are hidden is our domain instead. Yes, please. Let's call my user. User. Or even better. Yeah. No, not, not better. User one. Password. I'll do something in lab, something or other. Reach through those security questions to speed things up a little. I disable all this stuff whenever possible because Microsoft has enough information on all of us. And now it's doing Windows Update. If we had to fly Windows Updates to the DISM file that we used to deploy this, send it to deploy, <laughs> this, we probably wouldn't be doing this other than maybe a check. Okay, and here's our new desktop. Just typed our password in, logged in as that user one that we'd created during our setup. Here's our new user setting up his profile, so that'll take a minute. All right, look at that. We made it to desktop. Our applications and such installed exactly as the golden image was. Okay, I won't bore you with more. Um, I think you get the point. It's installed. Okay, so there you have it. You see all the icons and applications, configurations that we did on the original reference image available on this seemingly out-of-the-box install. So kind of to review the process of what we did, we took our golden image, as they call it, or reference image, what do you want to use it? We installed all our applications, and we did that, of course, in the other video um, on how to use DISM. So we started from that point, and then we ran SysPrep. We ran into some trouble, and we showed you how to work around that trouble. And once we had that image, it was shut down, powered off, don't want to turn that on at that point. What you want to do is make sure that that computer is booted off by a PE environment, like a flash drive or an ISO or something like that, so that, that image stays completely offline. And then you can go ahead and run DISM, or maybe you can use Ghost or Chronos, or whatever tool it is that you're using. It doesn't necessarily have to be DISM. You can use SysPrep to anonymize the image for whatever deployment tools that you're actually using. And once that's done, your captured image is going to act like an out of the box install. You show that we show that it asks things like our keyboard layout, our time zone, and what user accounts to create, and all these other settings. And it reinstalled from scratch. Except when it's done, all our applications are already there, even though it looks like a brand new computer. And that's the beauty of SysPrep and all these imaging tools. I hope that was helpful. If um, anyone wants to see us go into the unattended.xml file so that you could skip some of these questions and make deploying even more automated, I'd love to do that for you. But I'd like to get some com comments and feedback to know that people actually want to see that before I invest the time in doing these videos can be kind of lengthy sometimes. And uh, you know, I don't want to talk to myself, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to see an unattended XML file, let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. And Really, they appreciate you all watching this video. I want to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity, visit us at www.cybervenger.com.